Hello everybody, this is Dr. Nowak again. This time we're going to talk about making a anoxic filter out of a canister filter. And the supplies you're going to need is some monofilament line that you can buy at uh, a craft store. You're going to need these needles. They're big needles, but they're not real sharp needles. And all this you can buy at a, uh, like a Joann's craft store. And you're also going to have to have uh, the plastic. Now this particular plastic is some kind of crap plastic that you can buy. It comes round, it comes square. Uh, I got the 12 by 18 inch. And this plastic will last a very long time uh, submerged in water. And I've used it for years and years and years in canister filters. And so what I decided to do is take the ADA filter and turn it into an anoxic filter and by making a biosinosis clarification basket inside of it. Now, the round pieces you're going to buy and you're going to cut them to the diameter of the canister with leaving at least about a half inch on either side. So in other words, it's, it's not going to be as big as a canister. It's going to be smaller by half inch on either side of the ID of the canister filter. This could be done with an Eheim Classic or an ADA filter is what I uh, decided would be the easiest filters to do this out of. So you cut everything to size. As you can see here, I made it the height I wanted because I wanted to make sure that I could put um, filtered material underneath it. But as you also notice, there's a, from the bottom, which is a double layer of the plastic that I bought, is on the bottom, and a single layer around the OD. And the double layer is because that's going to take all that weight of the kitty litter. But as you notice, I didn't go all the way to the very bottom. I left about a half inch gap between the bottom and a little edge there. And there's a reason I purposely did that so water can go inside here and travel outside into the filter medium. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, after you're done measuring, this is the part that's time consuming, is you take that monofilament and you start sewing the basket. Since I couldn't find anything and I looked all over for a basket that I could was pre-made, uh, I decided just to make one. And it was easy enough to make, so I don't think anybody would have any problem. A little bit of sewing skills. It took me, oh, I would say, maybe a couple hours to sew the whole basket together. But uh, I... Since it's going to last such a long time, I wasn't worried about how much time I was pouring into the sewing part of the basket. And as you can see, the stitching, I put double stitching where the basket comes together. Now this particular basket, I think is about five inches in uh, diameter. And it fits the ADA uh, canister filter pretty good. I would say there's uh, not too much of a problem but this is the way I sewed it to make sure it wouldn't come apart. Don't use normal thread and the, don't use the plastic thread that's real real thin because uh, it being so thin it most likely can break because there is going to be a lot of pressure in this basket. And this shows you a side view of the basket when it's finished and how the bottom has been doubled reinforced with the round pieces. But you do see there's about a half inch gap there. So when the water comes into the canister, it will come in through the bottom here and then escape out the sides very easily and then come along the sides of the basket. The water is not going to go through the basket. It's going to go around the basket, just like in an anoxic filter that you would make for a fish pond, where all you do, or in a sump for that matter, 
where you just sit in the baskets inside the filter and the water is going around the baskets. Uh, for those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, an anoxy filter doesn't have water going through the substrate but around it because it attracts ions out of the water. And you got a positive charge and negative charge water. So this is what it, what it uh, is used for. Pushing water through it will defeat the purpose because water is supposed to migrate through convection or osmosis or through attraction of ions, go into the basket and do what it's supposed to do, which is uh, use nitrates and phosphates for its food source and other food sources that will come into the basket. The thing about the basket, since we're not passing water through the basket or forcing water through this basket, okay, it doesn't clog. Okay, so bacteria go do what they're supposed to do. They don't need to worry about water shearing and they just naturally will start growing without having to worry about a polymeric adhesive adhesing to a surface area because the water is moving so slowly through the BCB basket that the bacteria does not have to build up that polymeric adhesive. This is the bottom of the basket and I want to show you that. I doubled that because you got all that weight of kitty litter that's going to be in here. So I sold around the edges of the basket, as you can see, and that was to reinforce it. I lined up the holes of the two pieces after I cut them out, and I sold them together to kind of give more strength to that bottom piece. Because uh, kitty litter, once it's wet, is pretty heavy. Not heavy when it's in the water, but it's going to be heavy when you pull the basket out. And that was another thing I did for the top. The top only has one piece. And the bottom is the one that has the two pieces. As you can see here, uh, this has a two piece. And if you see the part on the right hand side of your screen, that is a single piece that's going to go on top. There's no reason to put a double piece on the particular top of the uh, biosinosis clarification basket. The next thing you're going to want to do is make sure you got, I got some flourish iron because it can't get laterite anymore and uh, some kitty litter. This is just natural clay kitty litter I got from uh, Walmart. No fragrance in it nothing and of course there is the BCB basket already sewn up and ready to go and have the ladder uh, laterite uh, not laterite but the fluorite iron I'll show you what I did with that and I injected it into the basket but the first thing you're going to want to do of course is you're going to want to fill the basket uh, full of the kitty litter and you're going to want to clean it one thing I found out about the kitty litters. Now this is something that I found out with this particular kitty litter. I bought some kitty litter before from Walmart and these particular stones in this kitty litter, if you take it, you can actually squeeze it in between your fingers and it will crush. Where other kitty litters I have used and I've shown in my videos, the stones after they were wet really were harder. So I realized there's a difference between the two kitty litters of how they're manufactured that Walmart is not getting a consistent grade of kitty litter. Maybe they get whatever vendors sell them. And because of these two different grades of kitty litter, this may be a problem why people have problems with their plenums. They add kitty litter to plenum and they complain that all I get is a cloudy water. Well, because of these two grades of kitty litter, I can understand. One grade after you wet it down, squeeze it in between your finger, it's as hard as a rock. This stuff, I notice that after it's wet, 
and you squeeze it in between your fingers. It will squeeze and you can actually squeeze it and pulverize it into a powder form. So I would not recommend that kitty litter to put on the bottom of a tank. I would recommend the kitty litter that has more consistency and is harder. Now, I don't know if that kitty litter itself is the kind that's been baked where I did not see on the package where this one said this was baked kitty litter. But this, of course, um, I've used before because I've made up a lot of BCB baskets for ponds and stuff like that. Tons, tons of pond baskets. And it works. But it's just probably not. This is probably where some hobbies are coming into problems where the softer stuff is not recommended for the bottom. If you can't buy the harder kitty litter and all you can buy is the soft stuff, no, I probably wouldn't recommend this to go on the bottom. But this is just something I noticed when I took the kitty litter and squeezed it in between my fingers, where if you look at some of my older videos, the kitty litter looks a little different when it's wet, and uh, it looks like almost like a, uh, a gravel that you would put in your aquarium because it's harder. So just be warned, there are two different types. Of course, cleaning the basket like I'm doing, I'm cleaning this one outside, which, which worked out real good for me, is make sure you clean it real good, get the small particular matter out of it. And this particular kitty litter, it stays gray and doesn't turn different colors really after I wetted it down and cleaned it off real good. And that was one thing that uh, the, in one of my other videos, the clay actually had different colors to it. Make sure you clean the whole thing, wet the whole thing down real, real good and clean it top, bottom. You're not in any big rush. You can see how it looks like mush at the top, you know, but it's almost like, what can I say? You're almost like using a mud filter almost, but it isn't, it's clay. It, it will work just what, what it, what is supposed to do and make anoxic conditions without clogging up. Now here's a photograph of kitty litter I used, I got from Walmart. And as you can see, it completely looks different. There's gray particles in it. There's, look at how big the kitty litter is. So it has a different consistency than the one I just made. So I just wanted to warn everybody not all kitty litter that you buy from Walmart or these stores is the same. I guess it depends on the vendor who they're getting their supply from. Anyway, inside the BCB basket, you fill up uh, about a half. I got one of these uh, hypodermics that you use for turkeys. This one's Tony's or whatever. I had it on hand. Filled it up about half ounce of the ironite or the liquid iron that you can buy and I use that liquid iron uh, for ponds you use it for aquariums um, and you fill out about a half ounce of it and I just injected it into the top of the basket once you're done cleaning everything and then you can place the top of the basket which is only one screen on top you also leave about a half inch gap between the very top and the uh, BCB basket that you just made now when you're done with that the iron will be used in the basket for the bacteria to grow now here's the basket all clean. I injected it with the iron. As you can see, this is the way it's going to look inside the canister filter. You're going to have the bottom screen. Then I have a sponge. Then you can use whatever you want, uh, a piece of filter floss 
or whatever and you would do the same thing on the top you will have a piece of filter floss or whatever you choose but you got to make sure as you see in this picture you have to make sure that uh, you're able to get everything into the canister so you can't make it so large that it won't fit so water now will come up and it'll come out of the sides and then it will go around the canister as you can see there's about a half inch gap between the BCB and the canister this allows the water to go around the basket just like it would in a sump or just like it would in a uh, pond and as you notice I only have one piece of the plastic on top what this craft plastic on top and I still have it down about a half inch from top. That also helps so if you want to grab the basket and pull it out of the canister when you go to service it, you have something to grab onto. And basically what you're doing here is just turning a normal canister filter into an anoxic filter. And the good thing about this is you don't need a sump. Okay. The next thing of it is when you take this filter apart okay you'll just pull the basket out you maybe want to wipe it down but you don't have to open it up you don't have to pour out anything just keep the basket full solid you're not going to do anything with it set it off to the side you'll clean your canister just like you normally would and that's it put new floss on it and then you put the top on it and the ring on it and you uh, shouldn't have any problems after that now running you're probably it. thinking to yourself doesn't that BCB basket get dirty or anything else well no not really uh, I've been using these in ponds for 30 years so I'm going to guess that basket that you just made up should last a good 20 to 30 years. Um, I have not had to empty a basket ever. I've only serviced baskets by pulling them out and adding more kitty litter to them or adding some more iron to it. Uh, but other than that, nothing. So it's just something that you have to kind of get in your head that it's not going to clog up. That's why you have all the filtering material that you're using in the basket. So it's still acting as a mechanical filter, but now it's acting as a biological filter that does not clog up. Now, I've set this up. I've been running it for at least 48 hours, the canister. And it's all set up and ready to go. I connect it up to the tank finally got my disconnect valves and I've set it up and the only thing I noticed right off the bat is one no clouding of the water so the basket contained all the kitty litter in it I had zero clouding of the water no murkiness nothing coming from the basket the BCB basket so there wasn't one bit of problem there uh, the next thing I did notice and it's been about 48 hours. I would say that the fish look a little more colorful. Their colors are a little brighter. And I'm going to be honest with you, and I don't know why this is, the fish are a little skitzy, these parrotfish, uh, because they, I don't have any dither fish in there. And they're a little, But they seem to be a little calmer than they were before I put the basket in. Now, there's no scientific proof of why they are acting calmer. Is it the basket taking some ions out of the water that was bothering the fish? I do not know. But all I know is once this has been added, uh, the fish don't seem to be hiding as much as they normally did. In fact, as I'm doing this video, one of them is in the fish tank just staring at me, swimming. And that's kind of unusual because 99% of the time they run and hide and stay hidden 
and I kind of, every time I come in the room, they start darting around, you know, like angels do. They start darting around, but they don't seem to be doing that as much anymore or have almost stopped it. But I think, and it could be my imagination, uh, they seem to be a little more colorful than what they were. They're showing brighter and better colors. Their actions are a little uh, calmer. So there must be something in the water or the aquarium that was bothering them that now adding this basket has uh, ceased to exist. Like I said, I don't have any scientific proof to this, but that is uh, my conclusion on that, that it seems to be work. Now, this basket, it's going to take 45 to 60 days to completely cycle until you have 100%, where you should be noticing a difference in your nitrates, just like if you made a basket and put it in your sump. But like I said before, you don't have to worry about cleaning it. You don't have to worry about taking the basket apart. All you do is pull it out, set it off to the side, take all your medium, clean it, throw it away, whatever. You don't have to worry about re-inoculating. You don't have to worry about cleaning stuff in a bucket. Just clean it, put brand new in, put the basket in because the basket is already seeded and it's not going to hurt if the water drains out of it as long as it's wet uh, it's going to work just fine and you should have zero problems with putting that basket back in and doing its job immediately okay my next video is going to be on the ADA filter I'm going to do some decibel readings to let you know how loud it is because there's two complaints I heard. One is heat and one is that it's noisy. So I will do a little test. We will run the filter with 100 volts and we will run the filter with 120 volts. I will measure the heat being radiated off the pump to see if 120 volts makes the pump run hotter than the 100 volts. Uh, this may be interested for some people because that is one thing they said about the pump that it does create more heat because of the external pump compared to Eheim, you know, like a 2217, where it does run a lot cooler than this particular pump does. So far, uh, I have not found it to be so hot you can't touch it, you can touch it, you can grab it, but I'll do a video on that to let you know how everything is working and keep you up to date on how the uh, Noxie filtration system is doing on my particular tank with my six to seven feedings a day that I do with the parrotfish. But like I said before, the parrotfish look very good, very healthy, the tank is crystal clear clean. So I know the canister is cleaning everything. And like I said before, if you do this in a canister, you don't really have to t touch that BCB basket, except maybe if you want to add more kitty litter to it, you know, if it escapes out of it or some crumbs come out. Other than that, you're never going to have to touch it for the next 30 years or however long you have your tank. Until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Enjoy uh, your fish keeping and thank you for watching.